Welcome to the A-side for October 2018. Boo! It's not Halloween yet, but I'm trying to be a little scary. That was stupid. There are a few albums coming out this month, not a ton, but I'm gonna share them with you. A couple albums I'm looking forward to getting in. Again, this one's gonna be short but sweet, just how you like it. Stick around, see what I have to say. All right, first album up that I'm excited for is Steve Perry's Traces. Now, Steve Perry is the lead singer of Journey, or I should say was, he hasn't been for a very long time, but in Journey's heyday, Steve Perry was the driving force. He was Journey. When I was in high school, Journey was an incredibly important band to me. In high school, I actually did for a video production class, a Oh Sherry music video, which is Steve Perry's biggest solo career hit where I played Steve Perry. It's lost in the annals of time. My teacher, who was an awful woman, she deleted it before I could save it. So it's gone. Thanks, Teach. Steve Perry is back, surprisingly. Last thing we heard about him was that he came out with Eels, because he's friends with E, and he did a couple Journey songs at an Eels show once, which was like really a surprise. But the reason he left Journey was because his voice can't really hit those notes anymore, and I think that maybe there have been some band differences, whatever it may be. He's out with new music, he's out with his own solo album, and honestly, I'm excited. I heard the single, not very good, pretty generic, but I loved hearing his voice again. Steve Perry's voice is iconic, and it's weathered now. It's, it's downtrodden, it's beaten, but you still hear a glimmer of what it once was in the back of it, and there's something beautiful about that to me. As someone who's a huge inspiration to me and someone who's been a big part of my life musically for my whole life, practically, I'm really excited to hear Traces, and I pre-ordered the colored vinyl on his website that he signed. It was a little pricey, but having a signed Steve Perry record is something that really excites me. Next up, Novo Amor is putting out Birthplace. Novo Amor started off as kind of a Bon Iver clone. Very good, very talented, but it kind of did the same thing Bon Iver did, maybe on that self-titled album with a couple bells and whistles. I feel like he's really evolved as an artist through some of the EPs he's put out, some of the collabs he's done. I'm very excited for this solo album. I think that it's gonna be excellent. It's gonna be absolutely breathtaking and beautiful. If you don't know Novo Amor, you should add him to your list and check him out before he blows up because this album could be his gateway to being indie folk royalty. And finally, How to Dress Well, The Ante Room. How to Dress Well is amazing R&B, indie R&B style stuff. Beautiful voice, haunting vocals, and all of his stuff has been at least good, if not great. So I'm definitely gonna check out anything he puts out. This album will be no exception. No news, but there are some good records coming in. System of a Down is finally having represses for all of their out of print stuff, which was everything. As you guys saw in a recent video, I recently found a first pressing of Toxicity, snagged it for 80 bucks, super clean. Of course, they announced the reissue a couple weeks later but I was able to pick up all the other reissues for the other albums at a very reasonable price. I can't believe how cheap these are. This could have been a cash grab and they did not do it, which I'm shocked at because vinyl in 2018 is oftentimes a big cash grab when it comes to releases like this. I'm seeing single LPs go for 30 bucks, doubles for 40, 50. The prices are going out of control. This is reasonable, which worries me a little bit. I'm hoping the pressing quality is top notch. We will see, but I pre-ordered self-titled, steal this album, mesmerize and hypnotize for I think all of them were under 20 bucks. Deal this album's two discs, so I think it was 22 maybe. Very reasonable. I grabbed them at Bull Moose because you get those Bull Moose points for discounts later. They don't charge till shipping and no California sales tax. Huge boon. Temporary Residence Limited, one of my favorite labels. I've done an unboxing of their mystery boxes before. I own a lot of their stuff like the Disintegration Loops box set by William Basinski, the Alluvium Life Through Bombardment Volume 2. Still looking for volume. They're putting out another box set. Read about it, I don't really know a lot about it because they're not really putting out song previews, but the concept has definitely intrigued me. It's called Metaphonics, the Complete Fieldworks Recordings. It is a beautiful box with seven LPs and a book that accompanies it. Now, all of these are basically field recordings that artists have hopped on and added either vocals or they remixed them or they added their own signature touch to them. At least that's what I can tell. And the set's limited to 225. I'm just gonna read the artists featured on here that made me pull the trigger on this because Dan Deacon, Juana Molina, The Field, Panta Du Prince, Alluvium, Dental, Caitlin Aurelia Smith, The Album Leaf, Laskell and Nick Zamuto, amongst many other talents. So there's bound to be some absolutely gorgeous, breathtaking music on here. And I feel like I, if I didn't buy it and I heard it later, I would regret it. So I trust you, Temporary Residents. Don't disappoint me. I recently got an amazing grab on Discogs that'll be coming in this month. I got a 70s pressing of Pink Floyd Animals on pink vinyl. Colored records weren't a big thing back in the 70s, so having an actual legitimate non-bootlegged pink pressing, of course pigs are a theme throughout the album on the art, etc, etc, so it's only fitting a pink record accompanies it. Really excited to compare this to the recent reissue, which sounds great, and my early press that I have that's a little scratchy, but 
It comes in just a pink sleeve. There's no writing on it or anything. A pink inner sleeve, no writing. And then the pink disc with the classic Animals label. So I'm excited to see it, listen to it, and show it off to you guys. Animals is one of my favorite albums of all time. And finally, if there's not another delay, Kids See Ghosts, which is probably my favorite record this year, the Kanye Cuddy project, if you've been living under a rock and don't know what this is, is gonna come out on vinyl. I'm gonna get it. The Ye pressing was okay. The Nasir pressing was excellent. I don't know where this is gonna fall. I'm assuming it's kinda gonna be a little thin jacket and okay pressing like Ye, which is a huge disappointment. But maybe they'll surprise me. Maybe the delay was because they wanted to throw some bells and whistles on it. I don't know. All I know is that I'm excited to own it and hopefully see them at Camp Flognaw. We'll see if those tickets materialize for me. All right, guys, that was the A-side. What albums am I missing out on this month that I need to listen to? Not that many, so I can probably afford to add a couple to my list. Plead your case in the comments. What are you getting in this month? Let me know. If you like this video, give it a like. Please subscribe. More videos soon.